We're continuing the proof of Euler's theorem here. And uh, in the last video, we established that the middle vertices have to all be even. So now we're going to analyze the start and end vertices. So I'm going to clear some of this off. And if you remember, or if you look back in the video before this, you'll see that um, we categorize all vertices in three groups. Where you start, the middle, and then the end vertice. And we know that sometimes the start and end can be the same thing. But I'm going to set up this chart, and then for middle we establish that those are all even. They have to be because if you just think about the way you're traveling through the graph, you're passing in and out of every vertice in the middle. You're not stopping. That's an even process. So all of the vertices in the middle have an even degree. Now, the cool thing about the start and end is that they can be even or odd, depending on if you have a path or a circuit. And we can already see that um, in this case, since there can only be one start and one end, well, the maximum number of odd vertices you can have are one, two vertices, which kind of feeds into this right here. It's not really a proof so much as an observation, which is that no matter how we construct these graphs, we would have one start and one end. And it is possible for them both to be odd. And therefore, the paths, right, we can only have two vertices of odd degree. Well, then you say, well, well what if we just have one vertice of odd degree? We talked about that in another video. You can never have one vertice of odd degree. It's impossible to construct a graph like that. So in this case, it must be either an even and an even, or an odd and an odd. So we can only have no odds or two odds here to build a path or a circuit. But let's, let's analyze some of what's happening here and explain why it makes sense that circuits have no vertices of odd degree and paths have uh, two vertices of odd degree. So we start somewhere, let's say A, and then we go through a middle sequence. Who knows what it looks like, right? And here's B. So again, the degree of every vertice in the middle is even. And it could be a higher number than two, but I'm just constructing a simple graph. If we start at A and end at B, notice that the degrees of A and B are both odd, and that's a path, right? This is the observation. Now, why does this make sense? Why is it that uh, A and B are odd in a path? Well, one way to think about it is to continue to think of this idea of in and out, which is something we presented in the last video. In the middle vertices, we're going in and out of everything, right? We're traveling in and then out of that vertice, into this vertice and then out of that vertice, into this one, and then out of that one. Well, the start and end vertices are odd because the starting vertice always has one more out than in. So this is A, and we can say it has one more edge going out than coming in because it has to always leave this vertice, right? If there were two edges, oops, here, so this, if it has an edge coming back to it, well then I go from A and come back and I'd be stuck. But I don't want to get stuck here, I have to always continue on the path so I can go away from A, come back to it, and then go out again. In that way I have two edges coming out and one coming back and the degree is still odd, it's just higher. So there, A always has to have one more edge going out than coming in, otherwise you get stuck there. And B likewise has one more coming in because it's the ending point, so you come to it and then you're done. Well, what if you had another edge going out? Well, then you have to have an edge coming back because you want to come back to B. So that's four now. And that this degree is one, two, three. The idea here being that, well, we, we come back to B, we leave it, but B is the end point, so you have to come back again. So B always has one more edge coming in than going out. That's just saying, oh, we finish at B, so it has to have one more edge always coming back to it. And what is this saying? Well, that means that, that at the start and end, when A and B are not the same thing, when they're different locations, they both need to be odd. 
always having one more going out than coming in and always having one more coming in than going out is an odd amount of edges. Right? It's never balanced. So if you have for A, remember, one going out, okay, that's okay because there's none coming in. But if I have one coming in, well, then I have to have two going out, and one and two is three. If I had two edges coming in, how many edges going out? Well, I'd have to have three, and three and two is five. So it's basically uh, whatever amount of edges you have coming in, let's say K, we always have to have K plus one edges going out. And if you combine these two, you'll realize that the number of edges on A has to be 2K plus 1. And that's, that's odd, right? Any value of K you plug in here, any whole value, let's say you plug in 0. That means 2 times 0 plus 1, and that's 1. If you have no edges coming in, right, K is the number of edges coming in, then, there, then there's one edge going out. If there's one edge going in, then there's 2 times 1 plus 1, or 3 edges going out. And altogether, that, that's 5 edges, right? So... So no matter how we how we look at this, right, the number of edges has to be odd here and odd in B. Let's say, I don't know, X is the number of edges coming in. Well then X plus one is the number of edges uh oh excuse me, if if X is the number of edges going out, then X plus one has to be the number of edges coming in because there's one more edge coming in than out. Add these up, and this representation is the total number of edges at B, which is always going to be what? odd, right? Because now x is the number of edges um, going out. Let's see, you have one edge going out. Well, then we have two edges coming in, and altogether that's three edges, or odd. So, so we can establish that the paths, right, they have two vertices of odd degree, the beginning and the end. And I, I know I took up a lot of space here. But let's look at circuits. Why do circuits have to be even? What's the idea there? Well, it's, it's almost basically the same thing. We establish that all all the edges in the middle have to be even. So now, why do a why does a and b, which is the same location, have to also be even? Well, this we can explain in a much simpler way, which is that, well, to leave a and come back to it to finish at the same location, what is that? Well, that means there has to be the same number of edges leaving as coming in, because otherwise, how could you return, right? If I had one edge go, two edges going out, let's say I go here, I come back, and then another edge leaving, well, I start at A, but I don't end up at A, right? I leave it, I come back, and I go again. I leave away because there are two edges going out and only one edge coming in. So that's not even a circuit, right? Circuits have to return to the original point. So that's gone. So when A and B are equal, when your starting and ending points are the same thing, it has to, they have to both be even. Because otherwise, you can't leave and then come back again. So whenever you make the start and end point the same location, whenever you create a circuit, there has to be an even degree at that vertice because whatever number of vertices are going out, the same number have to come back. And therefore, uh, there cannot be any vertices of odd degree in a circuit, right? All, the, all of the vertices in the middle have to be even and I have to leave and come back again to my starting point. So that's an even process. So all the vertices are even, and there's none of odd degree. And of course, they have to be connected, right? Because um, we can't have a graph that's disconnected. The goal is to get from one vertice to every other vertice in the graph. So here, x and y and a and b have no way of interacting with each other. That's disconnected, so we can't create a circuit or a path, right? We can't get from a to X or Y. We can't complete any kind of circuit or, or path in any way whatsoever. All right.